Zone. Because, like, yeah, when he first said it, he was like, this is to remind me that I need to pray. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. But then later in the movie, that he was kind of like, everyone in town needs to, you, he needs a prayer, Matt. And then when you pray, every, it's like, they, they, like, unless they had the prayer, Matt, they couldn't pray. That's why I felt like they were trying to say, and I didn't like that. I think they put too much significance into the prayer, Matt. Not that I'm saying there's necessarily something wrong with having a prayer, Matt. No, I'm saying there's nothing wrong with not having a prayer mat, anything like that. So, yeah. There's 
mine is more of a question because um, I didn't see that as far as them praising angels. I, I just saw like he would do something and like if any of us did something, they would go to the person and say thank you, you know. Uh, you know, that was amazing or something like that and then we would point, you know, that was that was y'all who did, you know, or I, or I heard from y'all, whatever. I didn't see it so mine is, I guess, more of a question, like what specific scenes that you guys had saw, maybe I missed over that where they were more pointing toward the angel because I, I, I must have missed that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm kind of where you are. I didn't see it as them worshiping. I saw them as them like always looking for him for a miracle, yeah, yeah, this and that. But at the same time, I thought it was more of the um, presence of y'all that he had with him. Mm-hmm. And when, like, he came with the angel or whatever, I I, didn't, I guess I could see, no, I definitely could see how it looks like he's worshiping them. But as I personally took it, I took it as, like, the glory of y'all there. Like, it seemed like there was an overwhelming anointing, you know, brought people down to tears. That's just how I saw it. So, um, anyone want to answer Elder Linnell's question? What parts specifically in that? Um, for me... The uh, the part, like, I didn't quote unquote think they were worshiping one, but the part that made me come close to thinking was kind of at the end when he revealed his wings. Mm-hmm. And, and you just saw, like, everyone lift their hand like that. Like that. Like, I mean, I read some of the lips and it looked like they were saying, thank you, Jesus, stuff like that. But I, I can see how other people may have thought that, that, that confusing that was that they were worshiping the angels on that part. So, I mean, that's one of the things I saw. I saw you do it, I saw you do it, I saw you do it. And um, one part about that, I didn't like, because it kind of seemed like he was taking credit, because like, it was like, yeah, when he was on the bench with the guy or whatever, he was like, I can't make your own stupid, you know, like laughing at him, but he's like, no, but God can, and stuff like that. And I was like, I like that. But then it, when the rain stopped, he's like, I don't want her to walk home in the rain. And I'm like, you don't want her to walk home in the rain. Exactly. So that kind of like drew me back. Like, this isn't you. This is supposed to be y'all, y'all, right. you know, and this and that. And that that kind of goes like in a question with me, and also how I can see um like they worship because he came back. He was like, I saw you make the rain happen. That was gay. Blah blah, blah this and that. So I I can I can see that mm-hmm. there in that scene. And what else? I saw another hand. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say on that note, um, at least the, the parts that I did pull out where he was pointing his pointing to y'all and saying, you know, this was the father who did this, etc. I, I really love that. To me it was a good example of how, you know, we shouldn't be wanting the praises for ourselves. We should be giving it to y'all and not expect it, it, it seems like when we're in the natural a lot of times people say, Oh, that person is so anointed, oh you're so anointed and we wanna make sure that we give y'all the glory and don't take it for ourselves. Amen. Anything else for move on? Go ahead, Big Mac. I felt as though not not really a bad thing, but like like kind of after the movie happened, like I, f- I still feel like they didn't do enough to to make it point to the father because that reporter man and the reporter lady was still there. And when you think about it, yeah, they saw that he was an angel, but I mean, I don't think they did enough to say that um, the, the angel from the Lord did, revealed all these miracles. I think they kind of still going to say that Gabriel, the angel, came and did all these fantastic mir- miracles and blah, 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 stuff like that. I don't, I don't think they, he did enough to point to the, like, with them. I, I know he kept saying, this is the father, this is the father, this is the father, but I don't think they got it that it was the father. I'm just saying. Oh, the stubbornness of our human race. Any comments on that? It seemed like to me, like those people that already, it's like, yeah, I can see like a lot of them, a good chunk of them did believe in God pretty mm-hmm. much. 
But like with those two, like you were talking about specifically, it seemed like, you know, it was like a thing that they did, or ne not necessarily, you know, had a part of it, but just like a thing that they did. And I can see um, how they would just be stubborn because I've seen it in real life, how people, um, like prof they get a prophecy or something and they pretty much focus on what the pastor said and that prophecy specifically instead of trying to figure out a way or um, understanding Yah's way of doing it and then kind of try to make that happen themselves because I feel like that's just the flesh or like for lack of better words like the carnal nature of human understanding comprehension right. that they're just going to be like gay 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 and um, that kind of goes in hand in hand with the prayer mats too because I know he was saying he was like he said specifically a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that just it was kind of hard to follow through that in a movie but like when he was like this helps remind me of it and I can see what they were trying to do with that saying um, get this prayer mat to remind you because those people obviously needed <laughs> reminding you know right. that what was going on mm -hmm. so I can see why the um, producer or whatever the writer focused on those prayer mats because it was symbolic, not just mm -hmm. in the town, but also in the entertainment sense that it's time to pray. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I took that going on. And um, not to give excuse or nothing, just saying how I've seen it from a different point of view. Any comments on that? Uh, Ella Kalina, then follow up now. Then Big A couple of things that I want to piggyback on was basically the, going back to Gabriel, the, uh, give the glory of Yah. Look, the title itself, that's what first clicked me. When you put an I am, you know, then first thing you think, wait a minute now. You know, um, why, why couldn't they call it a visit from Gabriel or um, Gabriel, you know? But why I am, and I am is highlighted in dot, 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 then Gabriel. So that's the first red flag I saw. And then the thing with the prayer mats, Muslims use prayer mats. Right, uh -huh, they you. use prayer rugs. All t They don't pray without their prayer rug. So, tab left. So um, the message um, was lost in what he was saying, and the actions of everybody else is what got across. So your actions speak louder than your words, and so a lot of things that he was saying, you know, to make people say, "Oh yeah, that's right," but the the whole the it was lost in what the people were were uh, taking back to them. I mean, if I that. not being controversial because that's not my intention because I was going to say this before she said what she said but um, I, I kind of thought just the opposite um, regardless of you know the, what the other people use it for um, I I caught the part in there where he did say you know you guys need to not worry about so much about the prayer mats and instead you know are you using them you know and, and he specifically said that um, he uses that time to to talk to the Father. And he, at the beginning, he was saying, you know, you, you know, when did you talk to God, you know? And then she gave all those excuses, and then he backed up and said, okay, you're not answering my question. Have you talked to him? And, and like I was saying, um, healthy hair, for, and you know, the pastor gives us the pins and the rings and the um, wristbands and things like that. Sometimes we do need whatever physical reminders because we are in these fleshly, you know, bodies. It, it, to me, a lot of times, you know, out of sight is out of mind. And you might walk by your prayer mat or whatever, a sheet, handkerchief, whatever y'all gives to you. And, oh, yeah, wait, that's my reminder. I do need to talk to y'all. I do need to pray. So, you know, to me, I pulled out just, you know, I guess from a different angle that I, I really, you know, I, I can relate to that as far as the different tools that we use in the ministry. And this is a reminder that I need to set some time apart. You know, I've been too busy in my physical stuff that... Which, you know, we, we, we pray, you know, on season anyway. Um, but just to, when you, when you have that busy day and you walk by something and that reminds you or your necklace reminds you of who you are and to pray or whatever it is to do this, to do that, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. That kind of goes to, um, Piggybacking on that, kind of was going to go with what I was thinking. Um, I was kind of going back to the prayer, the prayer, with some things, the rat mat rugs thingy, and uh, maybe 
because it was such a broken town or yeah that they needed to go back to um I won't say the basics because you know I was never taught to use a prayer book. But maybe they needed that um that first step. Maybe that's just the first step. And um maybe I don't know, just maybe that um maybe once they once they get over it, maybe the father will be like, Oh, you don't need to use the prayer rooms. But like like what's the word? Like everything that we do, we like you know, you stick to the basic stuff and the father will add on to more stuff. Like you can't just like you can't just take a shower at the night time and then do all your demandments the, the and then you forget to do the basic thing, the Ten Commandments that's supposed to be hanging over the doorposts. You know, maybe it's maybe it's just gonna add on to it eventually you might take it away. But that's just I don't know, that's the maybe it's just the beginning. Thank you, Pastor. We are talking that reminding me of the message that Pastor was saying, um, in Yeshua's name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that was something like that. Like, yeah, we were taught to say that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a good help, but right. take that further, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Just what you were saying reminded me of that. Right. Okay, moving on from that topic. Anyone else want to say something? On that topic. On that topic, okay. All right, what else y'all got? <laughs> Go ahead, Elder. Elder, for me I really loved uh, the correlation with... Um, the town's name, Promise. Mm-hmm. And they kept saying that Promise was dried up and the Promise dried up at the loss of a child or that dream for that particular couple. And a lot of times in our lives, we the Promise, uh, it seems to be dried up in our life when we lose something that we think is so precious. Um, and it seems like we're walking through dry seasons just like those people, like they were losing everything. Um, but the couple, I love, held on to promise. They held on to the promise no matter how rough it got. So I thought that was really significant and encouraging to them. Are we that place for that? What is he here? back in um that with that hope thing it, I don't know it's like I felt that, that that was a crucial point too because when Doc had died um the, I mean he was like the only one as far as I could see the only one who still hold on to the father from the beginning of the movie and um it's like and he was the only doctor in town that we saw <laughs> and um it's like the father took him home and it, I guess it was like it was almost like a test, basically, because like he, he took. Why would you take the only doctor we have, and you have, and we do all this and that, and you know, um, <laughs> why would you take the doctor home, the only one who your servant home, and it's like no one, t- even still, they they still came together and they were like they still had hope that the father was going to deliver them through this, and I don't know, I just like I, that's what I have to. Um, I on the hope thing, I thought about first class where we, the lyrics to that song. He said, "So I'm asking you just to hope again." You know, remember he said, "Believe again, trust again," and he said, "Take the limits off of me." That that song came to mind when they were when they were talking about hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and also back to Doc when he said um, when it started raining and he said those are tears for for uh, Doc. I thought about a line in the other one, um, the wind, the one with CC. Yeah, where is it? Some about tears from heaven. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I can't find it, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, 
Yeah. 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 You know, and even um, Brody, whatever, he said something too, like, why he saved all these other people but take him or whatever. And I was just, um, seemed like what Joe was saying, like, um, he was just ready already because um, Gabe even said, if he was talking about Doc, which I think he was talking about Doc, how um, he's like, he's ready if it's your will. You know, so it seemed like he had already found that piece of God. It seemed like he already had that hope. It seemed like, Gay wasn't really there for him, right. but for the other ones. So that's probably a reason why I can see that he left and the other ones had to stay. You know, they they got a second chance. You know, but Doc already had that you know good, peace yeah. within him and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. Everybody. Yeah. Um, I think one of my comments is I guess is adding on to what Jarrell was saying. How um. He had the hope all the way through where the other the other people was losing it. Um, I had made a note about the lady, the mom, when the daughter got healed. Um, even though, you know, I forgot if it was the daughter or the doctor who said, you know, it was Gabe, it was Gabriel who touched her and whispered because they didn't see who it was. Uh, yeah, the mom, um, when she hugged the daughter, they showed her looking up saying thank you to, to Yah. And so to me, that reminded me of how even though they had lost it, they still had that faith besides the mustard seed. It was somewhere in right. there that they just needed for it to be pulled out. And like we sometimes do, just need to be reminded, you know, come back. It's all about y'all. Yeah, give him the praise. I mean, your comments on that before we move on to the next one? No? No, we we'll talk about y'all folks Okay, you got a comment for what we just left or something? Just oh, okay, go ahead. I like how they portrayed him as the little boy, as we were learning in the, in the class, how um, the grace in heaven is the, the little humbleness of the little boy. Yeah, so yeah, I like that. Okay. Similar to that, but um, not him as the boy, but as when they had him at the beginning, then um, reminding the lady that about the prayer, you know, this is to remind me that I need to talk to the father. Um, she, when he was telling her about it, he explained, you know, you need to talk to the father, or whatever. To me, I saw the, the part of, um, of our first day class um, where she was coming as. They had switched places. The adult was coming as a child. She was lowering herself and being humble and not asking why, just saying, okay, I have my excuses, but okay, yeah, I need to go ahead and just pray. And she just dropped everything and just prayed right then and there. She didn't say, oh, I'll think about that and do it tomorrow. She humbled herself or um, lowered herself and went, just went ahead right then and there and talked to y'all. And it reminded, um, at least for me, it reminded me too that, you know, you don't have to put things aside when you talk to y'all because she was saying how, he spoke to me and I felt it right then and there. You know, he doesn't make us wait forever. You know, he's right there the whole time. We just need to go forth and talk to him. So I like that part. Okay. Um, just one with her and stuff, I remember she, she was really thinking about it too because she asked her husband, are we godly? And he was like, I like to think that we think we are, you know, and stuff like that. So just to feedback on what Elder Linnell was saying, um, brother senior. <laughs> okay, uh, going on with what you guys were saying, uh, it was just amazing that uh, this movie correlated with this morning, uh, meditation class with Hope and uh, a little child, and you know, Pastor was basically specifically saying about how uh, you know you got to be humble as a little child, and in this movie, played as a little child. And everybody was humble to him, and he was humble to them. So that's what I'm going on. Amen. Give our hands up to him. And I remember at the beginning, too, he was like, that's all they'll see me as, as a child. Right, that's a boy. Too. You know, because that wasn't his true form. He was just like, well, that's all the, that's right. what they'll see me as, and stuff like that. And I could see how he humbled, because just in his words, I um, can't tell on his emotions, because. He yeah, man. But um, <laughs> you can talk about what he was saying and stuff. How um, he was like, 
this don't write a story about me. This story is not about me. This is not my right. story and stuff like that. And he always gave glory to the Father, so I can see that as humbling. I saw him um not causing chaos, you know, just kind of you know going not I want to say going with the flow, but he stayed at a peaceful manner. Like the guy was like, got the whole town in an uproar, and it's like, no, ain't nobody in uproar but you. You know, you're the one. So I like that he didn't cause chaos. Cause there was one movie we saw. It was evil. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I think the visitation is that. Oh yes. Is that what it's called? Yes. That yeah. movie when um With the guy the guy came and was like acting like Yeshua and mm-hmm. stuff like that and everyone was just like oh, and that lady was like pray for me you didn't pray for me but I'll pretend like I got prayed for and all that stuff that was my one but that one was a lot of chaos going oh, on yeah. like right. this one was just a just very peaceful plus I guess it helped that they already kind of had that. Cause like he said, when the girl died, everyone was praying for her. Like mm-hmm. he said, and that was they wasn't expecting him to do a miracle. They were already praying for her and stuff like that. So I like that part of the peaceful town. Um, yeah. Anybody else got something specific in their notes? Brother M T. That is I've heard from y'all. Minister for all you didn't see the movie. Okay. But you have anything to what add? was the name of the movie again? The name of the movie was I Am Gabriel. Jonathan, you had something? All right, Big Mac. <laughs> um, one thing I was kind of iffy about was how they did the sheriff. Um, the sheriff was, you know, he was, I won't say in charge, but you know, he was the sheriff, he was the, the peaceman, the peacekeeper, the keeper of the peace. And um, I guess you could say he was the one who maintained, he was supposed to be maintaining the order. But it's like, when when Gabriel had came, it's like they made him seem like he was crazy because he wasn't trusting in Gabriel or he wasn't doing this and he wasn't doing that. So I don't know if I don't like it or I don't know, like I'm kind of iffy about that because it seems kind of not... <laughs> Not right. I guess you don't agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, to answer, to not answer your question, but where I got from that was, um, I think Gabriel explained that when he said, "You see these people going through all these problems, and you feel like you're the one that's supposed to help and fi- help them and fix it for them, but you can't." Right. So it was something that was like out of his, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. he couldn't do it. Also, his wife died. You know, yeah. so it was like he was already going through personal, mental, spiritual turmoil. Right. So I felt like they did a good job personally and showing how he was acting all crazy because it's like, first of all, this guy's doing miracles. He said, no, this is what he said. Snake, 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 oil. snake, snake oil. oil. There you go. Because he, he, he was already dealing with that personally and stuff like right. that. And he sees something. He's up there trying to Google the guy. And he can't find nothing. Yeah. So it's like, here's just another problem that I have no control of, yeah, right. and he sees somebody else pretty much taking his place. Right. Like, he's the one helping everybody, doing what he couldn't. Mm-hmm. So I could see why they kind of make the sheriff the way he is. Right. I, I thought it kind of went good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was, as you were talking, yeah, it, um, it had just occurred to me that, yeah, he wasn't pointing to the father. Like, even though he was the peace, he brain, he was the balance of the, the peace or whatever. His job was he wasn't doing it in in Yah's name. He wasn't letting his light shine because his light had went out. So yeah, I guess it was necessary. Yeah. All right, follow hand up, ready for that? Come on, and follow hand up. Um, I wasn't. I'm not really too sure. I'm kind of iffy about him laying hands on people and healing them. Because I thought the father was supposed to do that. And that, that's something that Yeshua did back in the day. And um, 2000 years I, don't, I don't know. I just kind of iffy about that part. Anybody want to help? Well, I know prophets lay hands on people mm-hmm. all the time. And the father works through them to heal people and give them the word and del- deliver the word and such. Mm-hmm. Also, he wasn't taking the glory for right. it. I felt like, yeah, Yeshua did be healed and stuff like that, but I feel like we have prophets here today that do the same thing. Anybody else? Any opinions on that? 
I, I agree with you on that. Um, I, I, maybe just because of the fact that it was Gabriel, yeah. and that's why it, it's so if he could, Gabriel was supposed to be the messenger, and we actually see him in this movie taking action. Maybe that's why it's so iffy. So. I can see that too. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to hit on that? Yeah, I can definitely say that. Because you just question it, like, hey, mm -hmm. who you think you is? <laughs> 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 All right, nothing else on that? Let's move on. Uh, I don't know. One part of the movie, I looked at Jarek and went to punch somebody. But, <laughs> Watch it with me. I don't think they were in the, uh, in the sanctuary, but the part right before the girl died, when in the, um, I think it was the pastor who said, let's pray for, before this meeting or whatever. The prayer was just full of. God give us this, God give us that. Yeah. Uh, where was the thank you? Where was the, um, you know, God, you're awesome, you know? It's just all this, give us this, give us that. All right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I was, I didn't like that prayer, obviously, as, as a prayer word. It's yeah. like, yeah. not affected yeah. me. Yeah. Shows the state of that time. Anyone say anything about that? Or them teeth? Well, just in my opinion, um, I think Gabriel had a problem with that too, because you know that's the part where he left and he went to go talk to the went to go talk to the um the guy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, one thing I liked in the movie was um, they did stress even from the very beginning, like probably like the first few sentences about hope in a town that it didn't have um, hope or whatever. But I like um, because what Pastor was talking about how people, you know, go follow your dreams, this and that, and don't necessarily give y'all the glory. It's just they might, they might not be looking for y'all; they might just be looking for hope again. But I like when they said um, in the movie when she, the wife, Ellen, she said, we've been hope, no, no, it was her husband, there we go. We've been hoping for a change when we should have been praying for a change. Yes. So it's like they made that pretty clear. It's like I feel like they made a lot of things pretty clear with speaking right. and the things that they said in the script as opposed to what the director was doing. <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyone want to piggyback on that or any comments? What do y'all think about the message, which I think would be hope, but I think it was revival. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about that? I think they said it twice, mm -hmm. maybe at least, only three times. What do y'all think about that revival? What does that mean to y'all? And in respect to the movie as well, Big Mac? Um, see, the word revival to me means get up from there, but I don't think that's what the movie was portraying. Um, it was more of a, um, it's funny because that's part of the homework on one of the, we were on one of the covenants of RTM. And one of the scriptures says, if my people are called by my name and they humble themselves and, and pray that I will heal the land. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mainly what it was about because once everybody started coming together and praying, that's when everything, that's when the rain came that's when miracles are happen, happening, and that's when um, Gabriel's job was done, when everyone started praying. So I, that's what I think happened. I'm gonna get <laughs> You've been married too long. Who has it? You said something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. Yeah. 
And of the covenant says, through the anointing on this place, we are called by his name. So we shall humble ourselves, seek his face, pray, repent, and Yahweh will answer us, forgive us, and heal our land. Mm -hmm. And what does 2 Chronicles 7 and 14? Yep. Uh -oh. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen, you finally made quite a definition of revival. Good job. <laughs> Dictionary.com's definition of revival is restoration to life. Right. Consciousness. Vigor and strength. Restoration to use, acceptance, or currency. An awakening in a church or community of interest and care for matters relating to personal religion. Anyone have it um, found it on eSword or see to read what that one says? Webster's. Uh, this one says return, recall, or recovery to life from death or apparent death as a revival of a drowned person. Return or recall to activity from a state of lampour. <laughs> as a revival of spirits, recall, return, or recovery from a state of neglect, oblivion, obscurity, or depression. Renewed and more active attention to religion. Mm -hmm. So I think those are four different definitions. Amen. Um, give a hand clap praise for the definition. Can y'all see that pertaining to the movie? I definitely can. If you couldn't, I mean, just look at the sign at yeah. the beginning and then the sign at the end, yeah. you know? Yeah. That, that that pretty much is self-explanatory. What did the sign say? It said specifically. Oh. Where, where, where good things happen. What is it? Where good things happen. Where good things happen. Yeah, something like that. And then it had where okay. good things never happen. <laughs> so, yeah, that was definitely um a message of revival. I could see it. A lot of symbols. Now I think about it, the rain and coming back to life and yeah, stuff like that. Um, Elder Felina, I love how they put the scripture at the beginning. Um, oh, Elder Ravel and I, when she's looked at me, she's like, "Isn't that?" And you know, oh, I, was I forgot like, about that scripture. Yeah, I love how they did that. Nice. I forgot all about the scripture at the beginning. It was tiny. If y'all didn't yeah. see, it was tiny in the corner. Yeah. Asterisk. Yeah, yeah like. <laughs> Fine, right. Oh. By the way, this yeah. is where it's coming from, but some of us got it. All right, give my hand clap praise for that. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Any last words before I sit down and bring up the pastor? Go ahead, Elder Lanil. Oh. Oh. Just a oh. quick one. Uh, another quote that I like, I think it's self explanatory, but they said that it's a big difference in what you saw and what actually happened. Right. Yeah. Anything else? Any more quotes or any last words? Not last words, because I'm pretty sure Pastor will give us an opportunity. And so I don't just want to live anymore. I want to live in his light. I remember that quote. Praying is more important than sleep. <laughs> I remember that one. I that will. one kind of hit me. Can't tell you how. Yeah, I'm not going to tell myself. But yeah. Anything else? Well, if that be all, thank y'all for participating in the zone Woo. with me. Glad y'all got a lot out of the movie. But like the Father was definitely speaking to us through this. Yes. And we're going to give a hand clap praise as Pastor comes up.
Uh, the man said that, and it's quite interesting, he said that uh, the whole thing, uh, we've been hoping for a change, but we should have been praying. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about it, now that's 100% absolutely correct, but the good thing about it is they were speaking the right thing. Mm -hmm. They were speaking, man, I hope it's time to change. They didn't ever say something like that good. No, but that wasn't done. That was somebody else. Mm -hmm. They kept speaking. I hope something good happened. One thing about it, yeah, he's not deaf. Mm -hmm. And at at one point in their life, they they entered into a, a promise. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because see, they were slaves. They just didn't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. He said, "No, leave me for you." So he heard. And so, because of their lifestyle, because of what they were doing. They could not get a clear, 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 clear communication. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Much like in the Old Testament, since they they didn't have a connection or uh, uh, no d direct communication, then they could, they y'all not prophets to them. And he signed these things on angels. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Yeah. See, now, listen, 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 listen. <coughs> you. That's my dog. Oh, no, I'm The whole movie was about communication. Nobody was communicating nothing except bad news. Yeah, I mean, even the part that I that I closed my eyes, yeah. the 25 minutes went by. Yeah. The lady still, husband still getting called to share. Yep. Ain't no hotel in the bushes. I said, boy, look at him. Then your mind, that's what I would have did. What? Police. Oh, uh oh. -huh. I got a good friend that's a cop. He showed up to my house. I know I did something wrong. I'm running. Dude, then I told him, I said, yeah, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel. Somebody said, the man. The man. That's interesting. That. The man Gabriel, whom I seen in the vision, at the beginning began being caused to fly swiftly. Touch me about the time of even oblation. And he informed me and talked and with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, There you go, that skill. There you go, that skill. There you go, that understanding. There you go, that understanding. At the beginning of these supplications, at the beginning, somebody said at the beginning. At the beginning. At the beginning of the supplication commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee. For thou art greatly beloved, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. He had the answer. Now y'all said Gabriel was known as a messenger. messenger. Mm -hmm. And the Bible depicts him as delivering a message, but rather than delivering a message, it was more a communication thing. Because, you know, the name Gabriel itself, you look at it, he's a man of God. God is my strength, warrior of God. That's what Gabriel means. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel was not just a little two two horn little baby angel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean he was, he was one of the big boys. He was, he was an archangel. Mm -hmm. Which he had legions of angels under him. It's like he was a paper boy. Yes. If he showed up to your doorstep, it was a good reason for it. Yeah, be scared. He was a big big time, big time. You know. mm -hmm. and, and, and and then but he showed up here as a boy. Now see, I like how they put that though. When I heard y'all talking about I am. Mm -hmm. And it's a Gabriel. I am Gabriel. And if Gabriel means the man of God, he's speaking for you. I wish it is what angels did in the Old Testament. As I told you many times, we talked about it. The angels used to stand up and say, I am the Lord God that brought me out of the house. And they just, it's like, it's just a direct yeah. sense. Telephone? It's like they picked up a letter and they started reading. I am the Lord God which brought thee out of the house of Egypt, out of the land of bondage, out of the land of Last you have no other gods before me. They ain't talking about themselves. They just read the letter, basically. Yes. And, and and so what we have here, we have Gabriel, and he makes a distinction, and they make a distinction in that title about him not being God. And and, and, and see what we don't get a lot of times is that we Look at it like on TV, and we think we're 
we desensitize it. But I guarantee you, if JR jump up on that table and do like this, nope. and some wings <laughs> jump out of his bike, <laughs> let me tell you something. Half gonna run, and half gonna be in awe. But you ain't just gonna sit there and look and, and just like, <laughs> Well, it ain't that child. He do that all the time. <laughs> no. Even in Revelation, John walked with Yeshua. Saw Yeshua translated. I mean, I don't know if you get any better than that. He seen Yeshua translated in his glorified bodily form. That is just amazing. It blows my mind to think about it. But in, in the book of Revelation, as he was watching the stuff, he began to worship the angel. And the angel said, no, don't worship me. I'm just like you. I'm a fellow servant of the Most High. No, don't worship me. The glory is so magnificent. The people want to worship Moses. Human beings are made to worship. They can't help but worship. They, they got to worship something. They got to give themselves over to something. It's in their nature. Now, we say uh, they shouldn't have been worshiping an angel. Well, what you would have done if your livelihood depended on it rain and this kid show up looking like somebody lost out of uh, the Easter movie and pour some water on the ground and it start raining. And your crops come in, you get $50,000. That's a lot of money though. Yeah, you would be grateful. You would be wonderfully grateful. And if that was your daughter laying on the floor and he came to touch and she got up, you'd be like, I don't know counselor. <laughs> but see, yeah, look, these people had no relationship with y'all. They only had the external looking in. And that's what the movie said. They did not have a relationship. So they got the out, outside looking in. They are amazed because when you read scripture, scripture tells you signs are from the unbeliever. You're like, why didn't they just go preach Jesus, 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 Jesus? Because they didn't believe. Y'all know you don't believe. Y'all get somebody in this class. Uh huh. Check this out. Check this out. Check that. First Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14 and 22. Very good. 14 and 22. Very interesting. I catch it now, check this out. Wherefore, y'all there? Yes. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe. Tongues, now you're talking about speaking in tongues, they communication. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, tongues are, are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying, there is not for them that believe, not for them that believe not, but for them that believe. Preaching, pro proclaiming, prophesying, doing up that. Oh, y'all said that he, look, let's look at the, the, the personality of Yeshua. That's for people that believe. They have faith, they understand. Do you hear what I'm saying? He ain't talking about just proclaiming the gospel. But that's included in that when he talks about prophesying. He's talking about expounding on the word of Yah. He's talking about having those what we have called heart clap. These are people that believe. Or uh, else there's no doing no good. But the speaking of tongues are fire for those who do not believe. And he ain't talking about yabba dabba do. You know, a right of my Honda. He's talking about when, if, if, if somebody was back there from Turkish speaking Waswali, and I get up here and I say, okay, let me say, and then that man said, ooh, ooh, he cold. How did you know about Art Ruby? Yes. Well. That's what happened. On the day of Pentecost, they spoke another language, or they began to speak another tongue, and I like how other Linnell puts it. You know, she, like she said, they could have been speaking in their normal, normal voice and the people were hearing. Mm -hmm. And to them, they were speaking in other language. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they had to be slurred a lot because the people thought they were drunk. And they were sitting around the and you know, the, and they were doing stuff like that. That's how it sounded to other people. If you don't speak clear on, I said, jump, go, 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 go. That's my name. Yeah, it's wrong with him. Oh, if you don't speak Elvish, and I said, is that? Yeah. I speak that. And, and that's how it sounded. And it was like, what type of dialect is that? Is that what we have? Is he drunk? Yeah. He's doing what you said. Because you know what? You speak in other languages. Uh, Minister Chanel could testify this. You, you learn how to put the right dialect to it. What do you do? You do the expression that goes with it. You start making the faces, you start making hand gestures, and you start looking like an idiot to the person who is speaking that language. Y'all listening to me? Am I right, huh? Um, Minister Chanel? Always. I mean, it's like, if you don't know it. Mamma mia! Yes. It's Mario. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's what? Italian. So sign the foot of unbelief. So these people did not believe yet, so they had to have somebody to come in and get the communication right. Once they got the communication right, that hey, there is something better than the last hope that you had for the Old Testament. Or this old language that you've been speaking. There is something better. Let's all get on the same train. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel's job was to get them on the same train. Gabriel was a warrior. Don't forget that. And he showed up in this frail human body. And we think it's strange, but what they did in, in, in um, July. They showed up in, in human bodies, the angels. Yeah. And they went to Sodom and Gomorrah. One of the most evil cities there were. And walked around. And the people said, Oh yeah. They ain't going home tonight. <laughs> They'll give me that right now. <laughs> Did you see the hair on this guy? Yes. Here it up. They look like they could be taken. Your looks is, is half the value. If you look hard a lot of times at a person by a day and body, but if you look like you're a victim, like easy, and you're in the wrong part of time, you're going to be easily killed. I have some good stuff, buddy. Why bad things happen to good people? Why bad things happen to good people? The same reason why bad things happen to bad people. Bad things just happen. <laughs> bad things happen. In this life, you're going to have tribulation. I mean, they do no need you saying, oh, why me? Believe me, that person on the street cousin somebody else, some bad things are going to happen to them. Even if it's just young. Mm -hmm. But the world love is on. The map. The map was very interesting. I was sitting up there listening to him talking. But yeah, yeah, look, the, 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 the uh, Muslim didn't invent maps. The Hebrews prayed on maps. Yeah. When, when, when they told them, uh, when they said, uh, yeah. uh, go into your closet, they weren't talking about going into the broom closet and sit up there and pray. They had a place that they got and they prayed. But they couldn't make it to the temple. They had to they, they, and they prayed on they, they lived in the desert. The 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 um the Muslim and the Hebrews have basically the same lifestyle. All of them over there they did the same thing. The same exact thing. Just like we over here did the same thing. As when they, when the American came over here and until they learn, they live like just like the Indians live. Until they learn something. You read them, you read it, study history, they said, 
you know, we had to learn this from the Indians. And we lived like da 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 It was the same style. And so the map, I love that, you know, that it was a, a, a reminder. Now, like I put it, that I have to talk to God. I have to. I have to. It, you know, and I didn't, I didn't see the part where he got on the map. I seen the map laid out. He might not even ever got on it. It was just a reminder. He probably did, but I'll just say it was just a reminder. Y'all didn't understand. It was just a reminder. All right, listen to it. It's one all throughout history, and even today, people worship angels. They worship angels in Colossians. Do we can read it? You might not believe it. That's classic. Why you got all these verses? I don't know. I wasn't playing. Say good night, y'all. Have a good night. Colossians 2 and 18 says, Let no man beguile you, Jonathan. <laughs> Do not be tricked. You're taking no face at me. I'm trying to warn you. <laughs> Let no man trick you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up in his fleshly mind. What does that say, Pastor? Let no man trick you of your reward by acting like he's so humble. And he has seen this vision of this angel. And this angel told him, he has to do this, and let's do that. That's what it's saying. People read this right here, and they think the man's going to kill them to worship wow. angels. No. He's going to tell them he's seen this, and he's seen that, like Daniel. Daniel had a vision, and the angels came, and he's saying he had a vision, and he saw, he need to follow me. I listen to people do not understand what angels are and therefore that's why they cannot see a movie like this and take it in. Because angels, their spirits just like you and I, compatible just like you and I. That's why they was able to have babies. But what happened was when they said the angels left their first estate. Yeah, but I don't tell you what that means. Scripture says, um, the angels left their first estate. Estate, estate. To come here? Back in the when, when the angels came down and made it with women, doing that which is unseen. Nobody know what that means. They lost their wings. We all know what we're talking about. <laughs> Huh? Go ahead. Oh, I thought I said you were sorry. I'm uh, Go ahead, Mr. Warren. Well, what I think you made about state is, you know, the, the watchers were put in charge to watch over certain areas, and they had certain places that they dwelled. And I was assuming that's their estate, you know, the places that they watched over and the things that they dwelled in, they lost all of that. They had to leave and uh, they had to be cast out from that. Well, well, sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of. Go to June. Yeah, come on, give him a hand for that. If you pull down, it was good. I tried. <laughs> what an interesting invention. Jude 1 and 6 it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto judgment of that great day. What does that mean? 
First estate means origin. And sort of like Mr. Borner said, they had a place they're supposed to be. The angels which didn't stay where they're supposed to be at. And it's, it's sort of like Mr. Borner said, but left their own place where they live, they got judgment right now. So what does that mean? Yes, there is a thing called rebellion. Yes, angels left from where they're supposed to be at. And you think that they're not glorified. Do you think they cannot be in somebody's church preaching and touching and healing folks and doing that type of stuff? You don't think they're doing that? You don't think you can look at them and they just be too beautiful and you be hypnotized? Angels in the outfit. What are you listening to? Scripture tells us that you entertain angels unaware. That means you can't tell the difference between the angel and the person something. Unless they, they, you know, they disappear. Angel and the person. Yeah. Entertain angel unaware. It's a, it's not even denying them up there. You know, Robert said for the war by denying them a cold cup of water. Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing stuff together. Are you listening to me? So oh, this movie, this book, it's, it, it, this is very plausible movie, man. This is very, very happening. Happenable. It can happen. Able to happen. Possible. There you Possible. go. Possible. Uh, <laughs> don't laugh at me. You too, when me, you have a hat on. <laughs> happenable. Trying to say words. It's trying to say words and trying to speak in tongues at the same time. It's very happy, boy. It's very happy. <laughs> Are you with me? So you see, you see what I'm trying to say here? Anybody, can anybody sum up what I tried to say? There's an angel sitting down somewhere in this room. Could it be you? I wanted to say this was a very good movie and very plausible in every way, shape, or form. Even they had Superman and his daddy at the time. Yes. All the <laughs> subliminal messages. <laughs> you know, you know, it's a lot of cheesy stuff there, but these two right here, you know. Y'all the y'all the body, Jeff. That's 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 Clark Kent and his daddy. Which one was Clark Kent? The sheriff? Yeah, that's he played he played in the new, he played in the old Superman, the old Superman, Superboy, and he played in, uh, what's it called? Smallville, yeah, he played in, that's Smallville. Oh. That's, that's uh, Clark Kent's dad, no, Jonathan Kent. Yeah, he died. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and the angels who still not their first escape. So, we close tonight. And there's a lot more I can say, but I But uh, you people do not understand, and sometimes even I don't, of the glory and the power that we have with our connection with the Father. You got these angels walking around. I'm going to tell you how bad you are. You have angels walking around able to do all kinds of astounding things because they have to go here from their father. And they, 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 they're the level that we are not at. We don't understand things. That they understand things. And these powerful beings able to destroy men, able to make whole crowds of people blind, they're able to do all this stuff, shut a man's mouth. When I, when I went in a uh, 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 temple with uh, 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 John the Baptist there, and, and Zacchaeus and told, told him to shut up. And, and he talked for a long time. You got to read this. Yeah. Luke 119. How do you know where that you know, is? I look around and play on today, on day by the day, but I'm telling you some serious stuff. Oh, man. Tell you some serious Luke 119, and it reads that the angel answered, said unto him, I am Gabriel. Oh. 
I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and show thee glad tidings. How many it. angels you know Nine. stand in the presence of God? I don't know. A lot of people ain't just standing in the presence of God now. Yeshua said, he said in the verse you supposed to have read and studied for first class, he said that woe unto them that cause offense unto the least one of my little ones because their angel behold the face of my father. Got to be around them. Got to be in the presence of them. So, so what are you saying, Pastor? All that, all that stuff going on, and they look at you in wonderment. It is. Who is man that thou art mindful of him? See, they have to protect you from devils and demons and your own stupidity and they don't understand. I mean you 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 die. They don't know they don't die. Who is man? And you have this relationship that they wish they had, if they even wish. And you 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 could get down on your knees because of what Yeshua did and talk to the Father. Blow whose creation mind. These dumb, stupid beings that think they know everything die, turn to dirt, but yet you love them and you live in them. How special you are. And it's amazing what the Father would do for you. I tell this story because to this day I believe it really don't even do was coming home on the bus. <coughs> I had this was like maybe my second visit going to the uh, rheumatologist and they was trying to figure out what I had. I was bigger that that I am bigger now but my joints were swollen, huge and I had no way there so I caught the bus, you know, that's what I did. And I didn't know I was shouldn't be walking on it, but I, I just I just need to get there. I was in a lot of pain, but whatever is whatever. And I went there and the doctor did all kinds of stuff to me and put me in reverse pain. Mind you, I didn't have pain pills. Man. And he sent me home with a prescription and that's when he, you know, I found out, you know, you know, it's a bad situation I'm in. Anyway, long story short, I got to walk, I don't know, maybe half a mile. And, you know, it would be 20 miles. And you know what I mean? I ain't say nothing. I just got the bus. And I was walking like this. I mean, I couldn't move on. They were lost. I couldn't bend the knees. They were locked. And, I was like that. and it was hot. I mean, hot. Didn't know if I would make it home or not. Didn't care. I'm just trying to get home. Dude stopped right in front of me and said, Sir, would you like a ride? I said, You better believe it. <laughs> and here's the scary part. I was trying to show him why I stayed and he knew. He went right right there and I told him, you know, well, we, I stay right up here. That, yeah, it, 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 he wasn't really studying, but he did it. Took me home. Y'all ready for this? I told this before, so y'all know what happened. I got out of the car. Started walking to the thing. I wanted to give him some gas money. Because I ain't have no gas money to give him. And so I went to turn around and he was gone. The car was gone. I don't care who you are. I can hear you pull off. <laughs> I can hear a car move. Right. I just got out the car, walked around the car, started going on, and I turned around, and it's gone. Our house is on the corner. 
he would have had to back up and turn around to go that way and I would have swung. It, it's a straight little thing and he had to go up there and turn the corner. I would have saw the tail if he went that way. You know, I think you see the road up here. <coughs> Gone. And the spirit told me that was an angel, so I'm thinking that probably was a human. But as I got older, you know, Paul, you know, yeah. angels, I, I, I'm thinking, you know, the spirit told me this one sent that right. y'all something to help me out. But now, you know, not now, but as the years went by, I went up thinking, man, that's a lot of supernatural stuff happening right at the right time. And I've had conversations with angels. I know that's a little bit out there, but I have. And the thing about it, I don't even want to talk to them. Because I don't sit down and pray to angels. And see, that's what the enemy wants you to do. Y'all know what I'm saying? I don't sit around and seek out the angels and, and talk to angels and I don't try to in a way. I have, but I wasn't trying to talk to, I talk to the Father. You are, are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. I know you're not. I'm listening. I'm finished. Don't go chasing. Well, that's not what. Don't go chasing rainbow. Waterfalls. Go to waterfalls. <laughs> Don't go chasing waterfalls. You got out of the head because I used to be crazy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, don't go out trying to seek after angels. The only thing you'll find is a demon. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's a reason, time, and season for everything. And as I was talking to him, and then he said he was an angel. Or whatever, I really didn't care not. I really, it was not nothing amazing to me because I was at a level where I was seeking out. And I was going. That's the stuff that happens to me that I don't say. And I'm telling you, don't get wrapped up in this stuff. It means zero, unless it's a one or something like that. It means nothing. It's just like you in the ocean swimming. Looking for a great white shark and you see uh, those little fishes just keep swimming by. And they keep saying, hey, 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 this ain't looking for you. So because somebody here was going to go try to seek out the angels. Guess what? You don't have to seek out them. You're going to see them in the streets. You're going to see them around you because a whole bunch of them kicked out of heaven. And they manifesting themselves really, really, really soon. Because they know their time is short. And I'm finished. Anybody got any questions? Anybody, 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 anybody. I did not want to deserve that message, but y'all wanted me to bring it out there on the stock of the stuff that would happen. So, any questions? Anybody, 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 anybody. Let me skip it for now. Mr. Warner! Father, right now in the name of Yeshua, I thank you for your people. Father, I thank you for being their one 
and only provide. Father, I pray that your angels of protection be about them throughout this week as they go into the new year. And Father, most of all, I ask you to touch their mind. Because you told me you were one of the people that wanted to do. You were one of the people that was hungry after you. Now I thank you for those people, Father. <coughs> Father, we give you praise and honor and glory for the thing you've done today. Father, we remove sickness and disease off of your people. We call strength to their bodies, Father. In the name of Yeshua. Right now, right now, in the name of Yeshua. Glory. Whatever's hurting on you, whatever ailment you have, right now in the name of Yeshua, just shake it off. Push it off. Shake it off. In the name of Yeshua. Be free, be free, be free. Shake it off. Those idle thoughts that you have in your mind, shake it off. Give it off you. Give it off you. In the name of Yeshua. Can you want to in the blood of the Lamb in the name of Yeshua? Be blessed. Be powerful. Be strong. In the name of Yeshua. Look to your neighbor. I said, we shall know the truth. We shall know the truth. And the truth. And the truth. Gonna make you free. Gonna make you free. The truth. The truth. The it is. It is. What it is. What it is. Shalom. Shalom. Now get a father in your coming.